Pocketbase is a lightweight open source backend for your applications. It comes with a real-time database that uses SQLite under the hood, enabling developers to build schemas and validate data. It also has an easy-to-use user authentication that can handle email and password, as well as off to signups such as Google, Facebook, GitHub, and many more. Unlike most backend technologies today, such as Firebase and Superbase, Pocketbase does not have an hosting service. This means that you have to self-host it. Luckily, unlike most backend technologies, Pocketbase is an executable, which means that you don't have to go to the trouble of managing dependencies and such, making the deployment process easier to handle. Not only does it come with a lot of production-ready functionality out of the box, but you can also extend it using Go or JavaScript hooks to create your own custom portable backend. If your application does not have a lot of clients, then Pocketbase is from the get-go ready for production. However, because it uses SQLite, it might not be able to handle a large number of requests simultaneously, making it a possible death trap for your project in the long run. To scale it, you would have to do it vertically, since it is an executable, unlike many other alternatives which you can scale horizontally. I personally use it for fast prototyping. You can check an article I wrote on my website on how to do fast prototyping of any application using Angular and Pocketbase. To install it, simply download the executable from the website and save it in your project folder. Now execute it with the surf command and open the admin URL provided to access the admin panel. Enter your admin email and password and you're done. You can already create new collections by clicking the new collection button. Let's try creating a post collection. Input the name and add a new field of type plain text and give it the name of title. Lastly, add another field of type rich editor and name it value. Now click on create button and you will have your posts collection. Let's create a new post by clicking on the new record button and adding a title of pocket base, for example, and the value of pocket base is awesome. To read data from pocket base, we can do a simple HTTP GET request, just like we would do with any other backend. So let's start by installing Axios to be able to make some requests and create a simple HTTP.js file. Inside, make a simple access request to the URL of our backend, which will be the following. You can find the URL by going to the API preview of the collection. Run the file and we can see that we get a 403 forbidden error. This is because Pocketbase by default only allows data to be accessed and changed by the administrator. To change this, go to the Edit Collection button and in the API Rules tab, click on the List Search rule, leave it blank and save the changes. Now everyone can view the posts from the backend. Run the file once more and we can see that we get the data of our posts. You can also fetch the data using Pocketbase SDK by adding the module to your project. This way you can follow along by going to the API Preview section and try different built-in methods. To get the post like we did, create a new file and import Pocketbase CJS if you're using common JavaScript like me. Also like me, if you have a previous node version than 17, then you will need to install the crossfetch module and import it before everything else. Now create the Pocketbase variable by giving the URL of our backend and query the posts by using the collection getFullList function. Run the file and you will get the post stored in your backend. To check if a user is authenticated, we can simply create a function that prints the following information from Pocketbase. So the boolean to check if it is a valid user, the JSON web token of the user, and finally its ID. If you need a refresher on what a JSON web token is, you can click on the link on top of this video. Now, if we simply print the values as they are, you'll see that it returns false for the validity of the user, an empty string for the token, and an undefined for the ID. Let's log in with our admin credentials by using the auth with password function, followed by our email and password, and then just print the user information again. Now we have our valid user information indicating that our user is indeed authenticated in our application. The same thing can be done for a regular user by accessing the user collection instead of the admins. The only problem here is that we don't have a user registered in our backend yet. To do so, create a random user using the following random information and inside the user collection, create a new user. Once that is done, authenticate the user. Print the information, run the code, and we can now see that the regular user is now logged in. To log out any user, simply call the clear function from the authentication store. 
Okay, so we can wrap this up here, but you can see how easy and fast it is to have a fully functional backend for your applications. And not only that, but I only scratched the surface here. You can still experiment with the API rules, email templates for your users, authentication providers, image and video storage, and much more. Next time you want to prototype something, try using Pocketbase. You will see how fast it can be. Anyways, I hope you guys liked it. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.